2015 special meeting for Stillwater Utilities Authority. And the item on the agenda under general orders is Raftelis' presentation of the water and wastewater rate alternatives. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, after our last couple of meetings, we're here to present the, what we've arrived at as some options for actual rate structures, including dollar figures assigned to those rate structures. Last time we were here, we talked a lot kind of about conceptually where we wanted to go and, and got your kind of uh, fill, uh, filled you in on where we thought the city should move based on the pricing objectives exercise we had gone through and then uh, got the kind of approval of to move forward. So this is the result of that and where we've arrived at in terms of numbers. Um, so what we want to talk about today is, uh, again, we'll review the pricing objectives that we talked about last time, but I just want to give everybody a reminder here because we'll talk again about this tonight and frame some of the changes we're recommending and how they match the pricing objectives that, that have been identified by the council in the past is important. Uh, and then we'll talk about water rate design options and, and the customer impacts of those options as well as wa wastewater rate design options. And then we'll look at kind of the combined impact of what does this mean to a typical customer uh, of the city of Stillwater. So to refresh everybody's memory of the pricing objectives exercise, we went through this exercise with the staff, then the trustees, and then uh, the public in a public meeting. And in general, the the objectives line up pretty well, but looking at the objectives that we received from the trustees in particular, rate stability and affordability were most important, revenue stability was import an important factor, uh, followed by sustainability, cost of service, <coughs> uh, and minimiz minimization of customer impacts. And then things like uh, equitable contributions from new customers, simplicity of understanding and updating, conservation demand management were less important, followed by ease of implementation economic development. But I just want to kind of refresh your memory, and I may come back to the slide to, to kind of talk about how the rate structures we're proposing today address each of these options. So just talking about our current rate structure to give everybody an overview of, of the current rate structure as it stands uh, so we can understand how we proposing it may change. For the water, we have a base charge, this is a per month charge regardless of your usage, and that base charge increases by meter size on the water side, and this is pretty typical. It represents a customer's potential demand on the system regardless of how much water they use. And then there's a uniform value rate of 660 per thousand gallons. On the sewer side, we have a base charge, but it does not increase by meter size. Of course, the meter is a water meter, but in many utilities use that to increase meter, uh, uh, the base charge for sewer utilities because it does represent the potential flow a customer could send to the sewer system is how much water they can potentially pull from our water system. <coughs> and then the volume charge on the sewer side right now is 330 per thousand gallons. I think it's important to note that the fact that it's exactly half of the sewer uh, water rate is a coincidence. It's not really uh, a policy decision. So last time we talked about the different water revenue scenarios. We basically looked at three scenarios for overall revenue increases. So this is just <coughs> how much revenue does the water utility need to generate to, to sustain the system. And basically we presented two options uh, for meeting the future revenue requirements of the water system. The just-in-time scenario, which under that scenario, we could put off water increases for a few years, but then in 2019, we would need a 46% rate increase followed in 2020 by a 20% rate increase. Whereas if we more gradually raise rates, which, which would meet the pricing objective of rate stability, kind of having more level rate increases instead of big rate increases followed by no rate increases, we would need about 8%, we would need 8% a year for the first four years and then a 9% in the fifth year to meet the revenue requirement for the water utility. So in the end, we would actually end up with slightly lower rates by starting to raise our rates now and kind of work up to the level of revenue requirements that, that are needed by the water utility to sustain the water utility. What's after 2012? 2020. I'm sorry, 2020. Uh, after 2020, they do, they do start to come down a bit. In particular, on the water side, we have uh, Water 2040. The, the debt service for Water 2040 is going to start to come online. That's what drives our, our rate increases we need now for the water utility. I, I honestly don't Did you all not model past 2020? We, we have, but part of the challenge, what we always caution is that, is that we don't have a great idea. The, the capital improvement program for 2020 isn't very well defined. And so although there is... The model has the capability to go up past 2020, and it does. 
it, it, we have to be a little careful with what that shows because in five years, we don't, you know, five years ago when we did the last rate study, we didn't envision water 2040, for example, mm -hmm. which obviously now is the main driver of the rate increases now. So we have to be a little careful. The rate increases are, are lower than this in the future years, but it's in part because the CIP isn't very well defined in those future years. Would you say they're half of these rates? Or are they? They're about half. Okay. It, it really comes down to there's inflationary increases because in the model we have inflation for the O&M budget in particular. Um, so the O&M budget goes up <clears> to <throat> 3 percent a year. Some items in the O&M budget go up a little more than that. Things like health insurance we have increasing at a slightly greater rate because as we well know, those have historically increased at a greater rate than inflation. But it, it's a lower increase. But what the uh, what staff is recommending, you know, in this go around is that we look at five years of rates, understanding that in five years we're going to, you know, re-examine everything and, and look at what the capital improvement needs for the utility are then. So with these six years listed, how much revenue does that generate additionally? Um, right now, the utility generates about fourteen million. The water utility generates about fourteen million dollars in revenue. Um, Honestly, don't know off the top of my head how much the dollar amount on these revenue increases is. It would probably it it about uh, increases rates by about sixty percent, as I recall. So that would be about eight and a half million dollars additional revenue. We're looking for eight million. Thank you. You said eight million, right? About eight million. Yeah, that's it, and that's all. It's somewhat off the top of my head. Dan actually has it right here. Um, I think this is this is the um, yeah. revenue, and that's it's going to it's going to be about twenty one million dollars at the end of twenty twenty. So that's about actually seven million. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Any other questions? Would you rather me hold my questions and wait to the end, or no? I don't mind I, as, because then they're fresh in everybody's mind, and we're on the material that, okay. that we're discussing. I, I don't mind at all. Okay, especially in this type of setting. I'm with you. But you're okay. Waiting on you. So, looking at a water bill comparison, and you'll see throughout this presentation. You know, the main water bill we're going to look at is a three-quarter inch meter consuming 3,500 gallons per month. And this is the median bill in the city of Stillwater. Now, what this means is it's not necessarily the average customer because there will be comparison a little later where we'll talk about bills. And so what you have to recognize is that there, there are probably many customers in this system who in the winter their, their bill is 3,500 gallons, but in the summer they may start having discretionary outdoor usage and their bill may be different in the summer. But on, you know, when we look at the median bill for the city of Stillwater throughout the, for, for an entire one year period, the median bill is at 3,500 gallons per consumption for a three quarter inch meter, which is our typical residential customer. I was curious if this included industrial or commercial customers. No. This is just residential. It doesn't say it, but I no, wanted but to it, assume it was only residential. Well, in, in basically what you have to recognize is for our larger customers, the volume charge is the same right now. Right. Um, and it will continue to be the same in one manner. Their volume charge will be the same. Now, when we look at the, the, the inclining block structure with tiers, what happens is the larger your meter, the larger your blocks are to represent the, the fact that you do have a larger meter. But they will still pay the same volume rate for, within the same tier as residential customers, and then they will have the higher base charge, as they currently do now. Um, so we have the scenario one, which is no rate increase, which is really just to provide a comparison of, of you know, kind of how much rates are increasing, um, it, just a baseline. But obviously, that does not meet the projected revenue requirements of the utility. So looking at scenario two, the just in time where we wait two years before we raise rates, the big challenge with that one is at the end of the five-year period, at the end of 2020, we actually end up with higher average bills, well, median bills, than we would under scenario three, where we start raising rates now to kind of build up to that level. We actually end up with, with bills being about $44 for water instead of $52. And that works out to, on the just in time, when you do an annual average increase, it's a 12% average annual increase, even though they only have two increases in year four and five, as opposed to the 8.2% when we look at the more smooth program of eight, 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 and then a nine. 
But basically, this is just looking at, you know, we had talked about, there's basically then two options for how do we implement these rate increases if we're going to go with the 8% rate increase. We could simply do an across-the-board rate increase. And the advantage of the across-the-board rate increase is it minimizes customer impacts. And that, and that was ranked right in the middle of our pricing objectives. And what I mean by minimizing customer impacts is everybody's bill will go up by 8%. And so you know, from, the, from the person on a fixed income using 1,000 gallons a month to, to the largest residential customer who waters their lawn nonstop in the summer, everybody's bill goes up 8% per month. And so it, it's relatively easy to explain, relatively easy to understand easy to implement. However, it does nothing to address some of other, our other key pricing objectives such as affordability, cost of service recovery, uh, and, and it didn't rate very high but it certainly doesn't address conservation either. But um, So th this is an approach and, and it has its advantages of just being simple. We, we, just every, we can explain it. Your bill is going up 8%. The water utility needs 8% more revenue and everybody's bill goes up by 8%. There's no, and I've mentioned this in previous meetings, there's no winners or losers. So obviously when we look at the customer bill impact of across the board rate increases, regardless of whether you use a median of 3,500 gallons, um, and for this comparison we provide a couple different uh, larger meter si uh, larger water users too. These are still three quarter inch residential meters basically. We have 6,000 gallons which is a customer who basically is getting a little bit into block two and basically th this is about the 78th percentile of our bills is at 6,000 gallons. So about you know 78 percent of our bills are less than 6,000 gallons and again this is bills throughout the year. This isn't customers because we have customers their bills vary throughout the year. And then when we look at the 15,000 gallons consumption this is a, you know, a, an even larger residential user, but this is about the 90, um, it's the 95th percentile of our bills. So there are 5% of bills at this level or above. So this is a pretty heavy water user in the summer. Is our median number typical for cities of our size? It's, um, it's, it's a bit on the low side. I'm guessing it would be low because of all the apartment complexes in the well, you have to be careful with apartments. apartment complexes because a lot of them are master metered. Well, if they're individually metered, you would see if a they're, whole If lot. they're individually metered by the utility, you would yeah. see them. But you also probably you have a lot of rental properties mm -hmm. where people probably aren't ha doing a lot of outdoor usage. Or you know. laundry. <laughs> well, they go. yeah, not only the outdoor <laughs> usage, but you probably have quite a few rental properties where the people aren't even here in the summer either. So. Well, you take laundry home to mama. She does. Well, and there, there's that as well. Um, so it, it certainly 3,500 gallon median is, is pretty. Um, it's a little bit on the low side. Um, what but would be more typical? Would you? I mean, 5,000. Yeah, 5,000, 6,000, depending whether you're looking at average versus median. But yeah, yeah it, it, average. Yeah. Okay. Tom, real quick, and I, I just want to make sure that all the trustees, because it, it took me part of a conversation with you to fully understand this one point. I want to make sure all the trustees are there. With median, we're talking number of bills number the of bills. utility authority sends out every year. Right. So even though 12 are coming to my house, I <coughs> equal 12 going into this pot that we're oh, counting. Right. Oh. It's not number of customers. Oh. It's number of bills sent out. It's not like average out. monthly use or anything. No. no. Oh. It is and number I of bills sent out, and that is so important, that distinction of bills sent out as opposed to true customers. <clears throat> and so I want to make sure that yep. we it all is. How many, get how many, that. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> in, number of bills. Right. Yes, number of bills that are issued Of those 210, 3,500 was the median point. Yep. Yes, half the, the half of those average. bills were less than that. Okay, now here, here's the important question why it's important how many customers does that represent percentage wise we don't have that data but you can expect that it's more than basically you're going to have some customers who are always below that amount but then you're going to have and this is the example i mentioned earlier where you where you will have some customers who use 3500 gallons in the winter but come summertime they're going to start their outdoor discretionary usage and their bill is Five, going to go six, up seven, eight. so 
you can expect it's probably more like 60, 70 percent of customers do get bills that low at least once during the year. But a lot that you probably have quite a few, you know, customers who are at that level in the winter. But then come summertime, they get into the discretionary outdoor usage and then they're going to move up and move into tier two that we're proposing, maybe even tier three. Okay. So um, the way we analyze the data, we, we didn't look at it that way. But basically, I think you could safely assume it would be. 60 70 percent of customers get a bill at that level on average or lower or lower so the next alternative we looked at was the increasing block rates and, and we talked about this last time so this is identifying fixed tiers uh, of consumption in basically splitting up into three tiers. And a lot of people consider this a conservation rate design. I want to be careful. It certainly does encourage conservation by charging people who use more water more. And really what, what, it's, what it should represent is that block two becomes discretionary outdoor usage, but a reasonable level of discretionary outdoor usage. And then block three becomes kind of what, what is identified as, well, that's a pretty high level of outdoor usage. But in terms of why that makes sense from a cost to service perspective, what that represents is the fact that if you you know if you're using again 3,500 gallons in the winter, but then come summer you're using 14,000 gallons, we have to build. Be. There are there are people. I, I I promise you there there are customers who who probably wow. meet that pattern from watering their grass every day and sometimes maybe even twice a day. I have neighbors who water their grass twice a day. I I I could never figure that out, but. Um, but what it represents is the fact that they're using 14,000 gallons in the summer, but we've built the capacity, we've built the, the raw water supply, we've built a treatment plant to deliver 14,000 gallons a day for them, but they're only using a part of the year. So in the part of the year that you're, where they're using it, they should pay more for it to, to really truly recover the cost of us having built those, that capacity to serve them. Now, it's an inexact science because, I mean, you could go to an extreme and it is possible to have a residential customer who uses 15,000 gallons in the winter and 15 in the summer. And so this isn't perfect because we have to make some assumptions in grouping them all into classes, but it, it is a reasonable approach that many utilities use. Um, to, and then for the larger meter sizes, we adjust up the meter, we adjust up the blocks to reflect the fact that they have greater potential demand. And so, so what's a reasonable level of block one usage for a larger meter is not the same as it is for a three quarter inch meter. So, will show you basically the, the amount of usage in each block for the larger meters gets ratcheted up so that roughly the same percentage of usage uh, for each meter size is in block one. So it's roughly 60% uh, it's roughly of uh, consumption, I believe it's actually 70% of consumption is in block one for each meter size. So looking at how that, how that comes out to numbers. So what we're proposing for a three quarter inch meter is that the first 4,000 gallons of usage would be in tier one. Uh, and then the next 8,000 up to 12,000 would be in tier two. And then anything over 12,000 would be in tier three. And that represents, so tier three is about 10% of our total usage. And tier two is about 20% of our total usage, total build consumption for three quarter inch meters each year. So what's the magic in the differentiation? Why 12 as opposed to 10 or 14? It, there's a lot of there's a lot of art when it comes to, to designing these blocks and it's really you know kind of and it really depends on our objective if we were really trying to target water conservation we would be more aggressive in setting those tiers but you know so basically as I said to get to the 12 block that's five percent of our total three quarter inch bills each year and it's about ten percent of our total consumption that's a pretty low number you wouldn't want to have any less than about three, four percent in that block, because then you're not, then you're hardly getting any usage up in there, and you're really just picking on somebody. So it, it, there is a lot of art there. It, it's certainly somewhat discretionary, but you know, working with staff and just you know where we kind of you know where we felt rates, you know, we would like to have the rate structure go to to meet our pricing objectives. That's where they fell out. And then for the larger meter sizes, they basically fall in line so that about the same. Uh, amount of usage is in each tier is in the three quarter inch tier. Let me, let me add just something to that because Mr. Beckley said in working with staff, we, we sat down um, uh, over with them and 
uh, looked at the various factors. And with each factor or each discretionary factor we looked at, we, um, what we did was we looked, at, looked back to the objectives that the trustees set at the very beginning of this process. And I outwardly asked the question, how does you know, the selection of this factor influence the rate so that it meets those objectives? And that was, when he says work with staff, staff's driving force was those objectives that you all set. And, and our intent was to be able to say that we could check the, the top ones off and say that we've met those uh, or at least balanced because there was a couple that were slightly competing. But so the ones that were higher, we wanted to make sure that we were meeting those to a greater degree than the, the, the lower priority. So I just wanted to let you know that although it's a term, and Tom's saying that it may be a term of art or there might be some artfulness to it, we really stayed focused on those objectives, and that's really what influenced um, how those variable factors were chosen. We were having a conversation today, and it was, as we explained, the 3,500 gallons being the median of all bills. And you go back to one of the highest objectives in all three groups is affordability. And I think we make an assumption that those in the lower use area is where affordability is the most important value. And so when you go to 4,000 as your tier one, it ensures you you're going to capture a, a larger quantity, even more than the median bills, to ensure that they're at that block one level. So it kind of... I think it was a step to ensure that affordability of the smaller users. And it can be challenging because we are making the assumption that, you know, affordability is for those using less water. But what it comes down to is, you know, people ha can control how much water they use. So if they need to keep their bills low, they, they do have the ability by staying in, into tier one. And we understand that may be a sacrifice for some customers who, who are on fixed incomes or otherwise. But it, it still allows us through the rate structure to give them the option. Uh, you know, to be able to control their bill. And we'll talk uh, in here in a minute um, about what this means. So, in effect, how does this, you know, really address affordability? Because affordability was very important to the trustees. And so, in, like I said, a lot of people consider this inclining block conservation, but it actually, it, it is a way to address affordability. And the way that occurs is, as you can see on this slide, so with the base charge, we're proposing that actually the three-quarter inch base charge, again, in everybody, and what I want to remind everybody is, is this includes an 8% increase in overall revenue for the water utility. So for the three-quarter inch meter, we're actually proposing their base charge stay the same, $6.60. So even though we're proposing 8% more revenue, that base charge is not going up 8%. It's going to stay at 0%. Um, for the larger meters, we're actually proposing uh, then that gets ratcheted up by meter size. Um, and so that increases as, lo as larger meters, just as it does now. Now, where the affordability also comes into play is you'll see in Tier 1 for Inside City, we're proposing a rate of $6.31. So this is actually less than the existing rate of $6.60 per 1,000 gallons. Um, and so anybody who's just using... 4,000 gallons or less, their bill will actually go down from existing rates, even though we are raising overall revenue levels by 8%. Um, and so then even if you get a little bit over 4,000, you won't see an increase until you're, you're a little bit over 4,000. We bill in 100-gallon increments. Um, outside city rates, uh, by policy, they're set at one and a half. Uh, we actually examined, kind of d d looked at a more empirical basis, how to uh, examining the outside city rates, and we came to, to the to the conclusion that 1.5 was a reasonable differential based on a, a numerical analysis as well. Um, it's important to note, so when we raise rates by, in tier two and tier three by these amounts, we are assuming that there will be uh, resistance to those increases. Basically, it will have the impact of decreasing usage within those blocks. So within tier two, there is a, about a 5% decrease in usage. There is a 5% decrease in usage. And then tier three, there's a 10% <coughs> decrease in usage over existing levels at those consumption levels. Um, on, the, on the base charge, we also did a detailed analysis of the base charge. 
basically there's three components in the base charge. There's meter reading, billing and collection, and customer service. And that is the same for every customer regardless of meter size. It's about $2 per customer. Then there's meters and services for water, for the water meters. And this is based on the cost of the meter. So basically a three quarter inch customer pays a certain amount for meters and services. Uh, a customer using a six inch meter, they have a much larger meter that's much more expensive. It's approximately 38 times more expensive and that represents the cost that, you know, of installing, maintaining that meter over time. So they pay 38 times more for meters and services than a three quarter inch meter. And then we have the readiness to serve component. And this is, this represents the cost of us having a raw water system, treatment plant, distribution, and transmission that's there and ready to meet their water needs regardless of whether or not they use any water. Now what we did is, as I mentioned, we're keeping the three quarter inch charge the same at 660. So we determined, basically once we determined the billing and, billing, and, billing and meter costs, we determined how much of the remaining 660 could be reasonably allocated to readiness to serve, and then we scaled that up by the potential demand of the larger meters. And actually the way it works out, although it doesn't show on this slide, is for the larger meters, they are seeing an increase in their base charge for larger meters up to six inch, and then six inch is actually seeing a very slight decrease. It's going down by $6 from $2.36 to $2.30. Um, so those charges are being adjusted, so we're actually generating a little more revenue from the meter, from the base charges uh, from the larger meters based on our analysis of, of, the, of the appropriate levels. And this is really just using the existing 660 and breaking it down into those pieces. We determined that those meters basically between one and four inch should be paying a bit more than they are currently paying. So I want to talk, uh, one of the challenges is, so what does doing the, this tiered charge get us? It, it, it gets us affordability and it gets us cost of service recovery, which were important pricing factors. Now, where it hurts us a little bit when we look at our pricing objectives is uh, the ability, you know, easy to understand. It's, it, it, it's, I, it's not difficult, to, I don't believe it's that difficult to understand, but it's certainly more complicated than what we're doing now. There's no question about that. I need that. you to walk me through the numbers on this slide. And, and that, that's why we have this slide, because I, I want to walk everybody through the numbers. So. Um, we have the three customers we looked at, the, the 3,500, 6,000, and 1,500 gallon customers. So looking at the tier blocks for each of those, for the three quarter inch meter, the tier blocks are at four, 12, and then anything over 12. So the, three, the customer, the median bill using 3,500 gallons a month, all of their usage is in tier one. And so that's what this shows. So then what's important to recognize is that, so when, then when you move to the customer who's using 6,000 gallons a month, it's not that they pay for all their usage in tier two, they still get their first 4,000 gallons of water at that same tier one rate as the customer who only uses up to 4,000 gallons. So you pay the same for that increment of usage as any other customer. Every customer pays the same for the same increment of usage. But then when they move into tier two, they pay for the next 2,000 gallons at that tier two rate. So a tier two customer always gets the first four. They still pay the one. same right. They still pay the same price for that first four thousand gallons of usage. It's not that they all of a sudden all of their usage gets charged at that higher rate. They still move through each tier, and this applies to to all the customers regardless of meter size. We're using the three quarter inch for the example here. Looking at the customer using fifteen thousand gallons a month, so then similarly they still get the all their usage. You know their first four thousand at the tier one rate. Then they get. 8,000 at the tier two rate before they move to tier three. And so they're only paying for that 3,000 gallons of usage over the tier cutoff at that higher tier three rate. So then at the bottom, you'll see kind of the breakdown of how that applies mathematically. Everybody for that up to 4,000, you pay $6.31 per thousand gallons for that first 4,000 gallons of usage, which is less than our existing rate for that usage. Um, then for tier two, they would pay the rate for that, $8.20. Then for tier three, they would pay $10.72 for any usage within that tier. But the, the key point we always like to emphasize is that everybody still gets the benefit of tier one. It, it's, not just ben, it's not just benefiting those who, who only use up to that level. Everybody still gets the, gets the benefit of paying that rate for that usage. 
I guess what would have helped me in understanding this is a comparison of what tier two and tier three would have paid well, in that's the old system. Well, and that's what this slide is intended to do. It, but looking at their total bill, just, I, under the existing system, they would pay six dollars and sixty cents for all their usage. But looking at what that means in terms of just the water component of their bill, um, their current, the first column. So that we have the usage, and then the first column is what they would pay under the existing rate structure, their current monthly bill. And then we have the projected volumetric charge under the new tiered structure, and then the base charge, which is the same as the current base charge, and then the FY 2016 projected bill. And what's important to recognize here is this projected bill includes an 8% overall rate increase. So even though we're raising revenues for the water utility by 8%, somebody with a median bill of $3,500 is not only not seeing an 8% increase, they are seeing a 3% decrease in their bill under this rate structure because of, the, because of that tier one rate being lower. Now, certainly this isn't a huge decrease, but when you recognize the fact that we're talking about an 8% overall increase, I think any decrease is meaningful. And, and again, I just want to make sure council's getting that point I made earlier, that median figure is number of bills sent out. Right, it's not customer, right. And so more than half of the bills we send out under this scenario would result in their bill actually being lower than what it is under our current rates. On three, I did three quarter inch meters is the assumption through most of this conversation, yes. Help me understand the difference in these two pages then. Because this one shows that in 2016 it's gonna increase so what, are we looking at two different scenarios? No, we're looking at the, like, because even on this slide here, the person using 15,000 gallons a month is gonna see a significant increase in their bill. They're gonna see a 23% increase in their bill. Okay. So when you look at, this is the winners and losers. So instead of doing, instead of everybody's bill going up 8% by doing this rate design, by looking at ways we can adjust the rate structure, we're gonna lower, we're gonna lower many bills by a little bit, but some bills will be going up a lot. Okay, so I, I think I don't like this page then because it's very misleading to me because in my mind I'm thinking that I'm raising the bill and little old lady that is using just a couple gallons we a day by $14 for no reason over the next five years. I, I hear what you're so saying. You, you understand I what understand saying? what you're saying and where I think where it's coming from is where your starting point, uh -huh. and if your starting point from that screen is 8% and you're thinking of the individual, okay. that screen is talking about the system as a whole, the revenue of the system as a whole. Well, actually, I think he may be talking, I thought he was talking, are you talking, which, you're talking about the, the earlier slide? The very early slide. Yeah, okay. one of the... I, I should mean, have we, asked my this question. Slide, we were led no. to this. Oh, this slide. Yes. This slide you're talking about? Yes. Well, and, and I thought, I, I mean, I was pretty clear that, I, well, I try, I, I'm sorry. I was trying to be clear that this is before we take into consideration rate design, whether or not we, we do, an, you know, if we just do across the board, which is an okay. option. We just do these increases, and everybody sees exactly those percentage increases. That is an option, but it does nothing to address cost of service. It doesn't, you know, we, we were asked to examine, well, what, what's fair and equitable, you know, what's a cost of service based rates, and that's what we've done. <clears throat> it's perfectly legitimate if we just want to increase rates across the board. So that, let me make sure I'm hearing you and make sure I, that $32.08, so the second row down and the smooth increases, that's existing rate times 8%. Yep. Right. <clears throat> Okay, so yeah. that's where I'm getting confused. Yeah, this, so this I understand. I mean, so this is, okay, please understand I'm not an engineer. I'm an insurance adjuster. This is not any of my specialties. So I, I was confused, but I understand. No, I, I understand. Okay, so this is saying this is 
getting us there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the first chart has nothing to do with it. Okay. It. That's, it what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Okay, well, thank you. Basically, I'm, we have, two sets. Sorry. We have two sets of two alternatives. Because at first we have, he shouldn't even how, do we want, how much do we want to increase revenues? And we have the smooth scenario mm -hmm. and the just-in-time scenario. Uh -huh. Okay. And then once you, those are separate from how do we achieve those increases? Do we want to do across the board where we just raise everybody's rates exactly the same? Or do we want to look, you know, do a little refinement in the design of the rate structures, which is what we're talking about now. So basically, okay. it's like a two-step process. We have our first two options, and then once you pick one of those, well, how do we want to do that? Do we want to just do across the board, or do we want to look at adjusting our rate structure any to, to better reflect affordability, conservation, cost of service recovery, or any of those options? Okay. Because one of the, one of the, one of the uh, pricing objectives is, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to flip through here real quick, is uh, minimization of customer impacts. And it, it scored right in the middle. The easiest way to minimize customer impacts is to do an across the board rate increase. Because once, you know, assuming we, we agree that the water utility needs 8% more per year, how do we minimize customer impacts? Well, getting 8% more revenue a year, we just do across the board rate increases. Okay. Our approach is Right, so going back now that we've gone through this discussion, just to talk about how the things we've talked about, you know, address or are detriments to some of these pricing objectives. Rate stability. So rate stability, and what we meant by rate stability, you know, I defined this when we went through this, is having a smooth program of rate increases. So we've decided to go with the 8, 8, 8, 8, instead of having a 46 and a 20 after a couple of zeros, because that induces what's sometimes referred as rate shock. You know, you don't want to have huge rate increases with no rate increases. You'd rather have a smooth program of rate increases. Uh, many utilities would rather have a smooth program of rate increases. Uh, affordability. So we've talked about how we, we are able to address that to the extent possible by looking at a rate design that, that allows us to lower the bills on some of our, and again, it is a challenge, but we're, we're basically giving people the ability to control their rate increases by, you know, staying under 4,000 gallons per month. They're going to see a, a decrease in that first year. Um, revenue stability. Um, the way we address revenue stability, the main way, is through the fixed charge. So basically, we're recovering about the same amount of revenue under the fixed charge in the future as we currently do. So basically, it's neutral to revenue stability. We on track. Um, certainly, we could lower the fixed charge and then increase the volume charge, and that would also help address affordability, but it would create more revenue stability problems. It, you know, just if we ever have a cool, wet year, the water utility is in danger of coming up significantly short on revenues if you do that. Um, sustainability, and, and this is addressed through the revenue requirements themselves. In the, in the revenue requirements now, we, have, we are funding depreciation for both the water and the sewer utility, which we'll talk about a little more in the future. Cost of service-based allocations. If we just do it an 8% across the board rate increase, that really doesn't do much to address cost of service, because it, 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 we, we've done a cost service analysis, and and to address cost of service, we need to make adjustments to the rate structure, not just do an across the board increase. So using the, the kind of the, the rate design as opposed to across the board better addresses cost of service. Um, minimization of customer impacts. Um, and, and we just talked about that. The easiest way to minimize customer impacts is to do an across the board rate increase. Certainly the challenge with the rate design is it hurts, it hurts that pricing objective. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to say this for your benefit because we don't know each other, but I hate rate increases of all kinds anyway, and I don't want to give blanket ship false hope with the question I'm going to ask you now because I still don't. <laughs> but I'm, I was a little surprised to see a proposal that would actually decrease any rates. You talk about uh, uh, stability. Mm -hmm. You know, lowering someone's rate and then raising it back up even more is, an, is instability. And wouldn't it make some sense to, to not lower the rate and then minimize the amount of the increase in the out year? And that would certainly, that wouldn't be a very dramatic change from what we're proposing now. It would right. just be a slight tweak, tweak to the rate structure. And, and we talked about it, but it, just, you know, to meet the objective of affordability, you know, we thought maybe we would have that slight decrease in the first year because certainly what does happen is in year two, 
the rates actually go back up. Well, I'm eight. concerned about a false sense, hey. you know, on the public's ex expectations. These current rates are baked in. Yeah. They're baked in. And, I mean, those discussions have already happened, and now we're going to go down. Right. And then Even they're going to go, a little bit, yeah. and then they're going to move back up. So. That's certainly a, a legitimate concern, and, a, and an alternative would be instead of lowering the volume rate to 631, just to leave it at 660, and that would have an, and that would adjust the, the tier two and tier three rates would then come down a little bit from where we're proposing. Or just wait, and then the next year just don't raise them as much. Right. At that, but I just thought that was odd, the three percent decrease there. You're trying to raise revenue, and 80 percent of your customers you're cutting your bill. <clears throat> That is a fair, that's an absolutely fair point. It's just a decision, you know, based on working with staff, based on our objectives of affordability, you know, we, we kind of decided we'll do a little bit of a decrease in year one. And what's important to recognize is all these rate design issues we're talking about, basically these all get implemented in year one of the five-year plan. Mm -hmm. In years two through five, it, it is across the board rate increases because basically you've done what you can, you know, because you can't, we can't redo the rates every year to keep doing affordability. It's kind of a one-shot deal every so often you get that. So in the future, the person on a fixed income will see the same 8% rate increase unless you do another cost of service analysis and kind of determine things need to be adjusted. But in general, you don't see big changes in cost of service from one year to the next. That's why most utilities, they wait three to five years to do a cost of service analysis where they look at is our rate structure appropriate as opposed to just across the board rate increases. Okay, so this is the slide we were on before um, I flipped us back. Um, so the larger users do, do see some pretty dramatic increases in their rates, and, and this is, again, it, it really does represent the cost, of the, the cost of the utility having built the infrastructure to supply them that water, but most likely they are only using it in the summer because it's pretty difficult to use 15,000 gallons indoors, although certainly not impossible. So overall bill impacts, and again, to reiterate what Mayor Bartley mentioned, this is number of bills. And so throughout the year, 67% of our bills will see a decrease. Now it's a pretty, excuse me, pretty small decrease, but it is a decrease nonetheless. And again, this is over, you know, compared to an 8% increase. How, okay, how did you deal with empty apartments in the summertime because school's out? I must confess off the top of my head, I don't know what your policy is on empty apartments, but first of all, I believe most of them are master metered. And so that wouldn't, they would still be, have water service. Sure. Well, and they'll still be paying their base charge. Be very still, low. And they'll still be paying their base charge. Right. And their volume use will be very low. But that in terms might explain of, that difference between 3,500 and 5,000. Well, it, a lot of those, a lot of apartments will have larger, larger than a three-quarter inch meter as well, yeah. unless they only have two, maybe four apartments. It, it would be difficult. We have an awful lot of small apartment buildings and individual meters hanging off the back of them. Did well, you, uh, go ahead. But they and I, I'm not an expert on this, but I believe some of those are, are privately master metered as well, not necessarily master metered by the city. That's true. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, individually metered. They're, they're privately individually metered, not individually metered by the city. They have a master meter from the city, and then the building itself has That's private individual thing. meters. Um, so then at the other end of the extreme, so we see we have a few 10% see less than a 4% increase, 19% see less than an 8% increase. But at the other extreme, we have about 5% that are seeing um, a 20, uh, a 16, a greater than 16% increase in their bills. And this is just bills. So there's about 16% of our, uh, excuse me, 5% of our total bills are going up by 16% or more. And so this is, you know, what offsets some of that. And again, this is only on the three quarter inch meters. When we look at all meters, so this, this is that same comparison for all meters and we see it comes down. So when we start looking at the larger meter sizes included, uh, the number of bills seeing a decrease, uh, decreases to 54%, whereas, it, it, and similarly, the number of bills seeing an increase in larger increases goes up a little bit. And so this represents the fact that some of those larger customers with those larger meters will see, um, they're less likely to see a decrease. 
And that's also in part, to the, in part due to the adjustment we're making to the base charges I mentioned before when, when, where, when we examined the breakdown of the base charges, so the base charges for the one to four inch meter are actually going to go up, whereas the, si the three quarter inch meter is staying the same and the six inch meter is actually going to decrease slightly. You don't have a graph for the next five years, do you? Like a 15 or 16 to 17? Next five years yeah. is easy because it's 8% increase, 100%. Okay. See, that's why I'm getting so confused. With this. I, I understand. Point. In, in, in <laughs> I, I, okay, now I understand. Okay, it, we're right. good. Because first again, year, okay, I missed, I now understand what no, you said no, earlier about I, the I, first year is different, now the right. next four years. Okay. Right. Totally <laughs> caught up. Okay. We're good. I, <laughs> Tier one's always I know it can be Sorry, <laughs> people up here. You're good. That's fine. No it, it can be overwhelming. Yeah, so it, again, it's just, you know, we only get the benefit of the rate design in year one. Okay. Um, or, or detriment to some customers, of course. So looking at, again, the median customer, um, so compared to the first column in this chart is the 8% across the board rate increase, if we just increase their bill by 8% across the board without the rate design. So th th this has the 8% per year, annual increase 9% in 2020, and the first column is if we just, although that column should say 8 slash 9, but the next column is if we do the inclining block, and again, this demonstrates that same point, uh, in that they only get that benefit in the first year. So in the first year, it goes down by 12.2%, and then it stays at the same 12.2% for the next four years because they will just see a cross-board rate increases. So at the end of the four-year period, basically their bill is 12.2% lower than it would be, the same differences in year one. This, I believe this is comparing the two charts that Counselor Nahara was asking about earlier. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, this I'm is, totally caught up. That's now. those two. Okay. I'm good. Just takes a while. Sorry right. about that. <clears throat> when we look at, you know, kind of the overall increase then over a five year period that uh, under the eight percent increase scenario they would see about a forty eight percent increase and under the uh, inclining block scenario where we make the adjustment mm -hmm. to the rate structure they would see a thirty three percent increase uh, over the five years in their bill. Um, I want to talk briefly about wholesale and raw water rates. We examined wholesale and raw water rates, and what we found is that they do need, uh, that right now, that they do need some pretty significant adjustments in their bill. So those will be phased in over time, and this helps offset some of the, to it, and it's pretty minor. You have to recognize this is a pretty small piece of the water department's revenue, are these customers. But over the five-year period, their bills will be going up even more dramatically than our own retail customers. Um, and so they will, they will be paying more over time. And so this actually slightly offsets the 8% revenue increase, but it's, it's pretty minimal overall. But it, it, it has been examined and, and we have identified the appropriate rate increases for them over the five year period and they are greater than the uh, retail customers. So that's kind of the end of our water section. So before we move on to wastewater, were there any other questions that we wanted kind of tackle before we move on to wastewater, or of course you can ask me at the end as well. Let's go to wastewater. All righty. Wastewater is uh, a little more straightforward, I believe. Um, so, so in this one, after we met with you last time and, and, you know, kind of discussing with staff, you know, kind of, you know, based on our pricing objectives, so even though we had Rate stability is an important factor. Just when we look at the impact of the overall increases uh, with the smoothed increase on wastewater, what occurred is, is in what we showed you last time, is if we do the big increase up front, we actually end up at a lower point in five years than doing the smoothed increases. So, you know, kind of what we believe the direction is, what we're here to confirm tonight is, is, that, is that that's the direction you would like us to move forward in, is kind of looking at the, a, a large increase in 2016, then, then no increases for several years, then a 1% uh, relatively inflationary increase in 2020, as opposed to doing 8% a year for four years and then a 6% in 2020. And, and I'll, I have a slide that shows this in dollar numbers, that, uh, actually right here. Um, sometimes I forget what I have, in what order. but. Um, 
So, you know, kind of what does this mean to a typical customer? And again, this is somebody with an average winter consumption of 3,500 gallons. So this is slightly different. This isn't median bill. This is average winter consumption of the same amount um, on a three-quarter inch meter. But this is, you know, a pretty typical household. Um, under the just-in-time increase, their bill would go up about $5 in year one and then stay the same for the next four years before a pretty uh, 24 cent increase in FY 2020. Whereas if we do the 8% a year increase, then a 6% in 2020, they actually end up at $28.38. So they end up <laughs> $3.34 higher than if we just do the big increase up front. And I also think it's important to note by doing that big increase up front, we allow the, the uh, sewer utility to start some of that reinvestment in their assets a little sooner than they otherwise would. So in the long term, it helps us recapitalize the sewer system a little more quickly. It's not a huge impact, but it certainly is an impact worth noting. So again, this is the first of the two options. So this is kind of how much of an increase do we need? Now on the sewer side, in general with sewer rates, there's not a lot of flexibility with rate design. Um, but what we did look at, and so we have the across the board rate increase, everybody would see a 26% rate increase, uh, whether you're big, small, uh, regardless of meter size. Um, and similarly here on the same chart for th a typical residential customer, three quarter inch meter, average winter consumption of these amounts, 26% increase. Pretty straightforward with an across board increase. If we go with the 8%, it would be similarly 8%. The one alternative we looked at here was um, implementing base charges by meter size to reflect the readiness to serve. Now what's important to note is the base charge for the sewer utility is currently $8.13 for a three quarter inch meter. And so when you look, kind of do the same breakdown that we talk about on water, except it's actually a little simpler because we don't allocate meters and services to sewer. Um, it, it, that's typically paid through through the water utility, although you could make an argument we measure water usage to build sewer, but most utilities in their base charge, they just recovered on the water side, not the sewer side. So you have your billing, meter reading, and customer service is about $2 per bill. And then the rest of that amount is readiness to serve. And so. Similarly to what we did on water, we kind of said, well, it's about $6 for a three quarter inch meter. How does that scale up for the larger meter sizes and the potential flow they're sending to our sewer system? And so when we look at that, we come up with this, uh, with this structure of base charges. And so by implementing this, you know, we, we increase the rates for these larger meter sizes by increasing their base charge. And, and so what that allows us to do and we would still have the same volumetric uh, rate structure, uh, kind of a uniform rate structure, but our volumetric rate will increase by 21% under this scenario by increasing those meter charges. And so when we look at a typical customer bill for residential customer, what this means is that somebody using 3,500 gallons will actually only see a 12% increase in their bill in that first year instead of the 26% we were talking about. So again, by making this change of having, of increasing the meter charge for the larger sewer customers, we address affordability. We also address revenue stability, although sewer revenue is pretty stable already since we use average winter consumption that actually provides pretty stable revenue for a sewer utility, it's less prone to be impacted by environmental uh, concerns. But we, can, we still, it, it certainly, it's typically recognized that a larger base charge does promote revenue stability. Um, and then the more you use, the less of a benefit you get from that. So you see at the 15,000 level, their, their bill will go up 18%. So when we do the wastewater bill comparison, compared to the across the board, so this minus 10.8%, that's the difference compared to the across the board increase. So basically their bill will go up 10.8% less by implementing the, the base charges by meter size on the sewer side than if we just do an across the board increase. And then similarly to water, basically we get that benefit in the first year and then it stays at the same 10.8% over the uh, following four years. So when we look at the, you know, kind of the total bill comparison, in the, when we talk total bill, we're talking water and sewer here. <coughs> by going with this, you know, by going with alternative one on both water and sewer side, their bill will be 10.7% lower than if we just do an across the board rate increase. 
for each year of the forecast period. And so that's the benefit that we get from, from looking at these rate design alternatives. So, you know, we were asked to provide a comparison of our water rates to, to similar communities. So Dan um, pulled together a list of communities that use surface water like we do and then are similar in size. So we didn't look at, for instance, Tulsa or Oklahoma City, which are much larger utilities um, and have dramatically different cost structures. And certainly, and this is just looking at our existing rates. Um, and one of the challenges is, you know, we're asked, well, where will we be at in five years? The challenge is we don't know where any of our any of these other communities will be in five years. They, well, but you know how they changed rates over the past five years. We, but we don't know if they've been reasonably investing in their system or not, or if they will need dramatic rate increases. We don't know if we have. <laughs> I mean, well, the, in, in, there's historical numbers out there that we could look at. Well, it, we, for a lot of utilities who have, who have not been making investments in the past, they are seeing much greater increases now than they have been in the past. It, and it, it just varies by utility. In it. And so it's, it's a difficult assumption to make that, that they will increase the rates at the same. Because if the rate increase has been low in the past, there's probably a better chance they will need higher increases in the future to, to catch up on funding needs or they've just been pushing things off. Um, we, do we know if any other cities, if uh, these are our comparable cities, anybody else doing a, a rate study right now? I, I know for a fact that Muskogee is why. in the middle of a rate study because, be because they selected a consultant just a couple months ago. Edmund as well cons uh, selected a rate consultant just a couple months ago. And so certainly I would expect that they will see increases as a result of those rate studies. Thank you. Utilities don't typically hire rate consultants if they don't need rate increases. <laughs> I might have missed something on that yeah. slide before that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, the total bill comparison. The total bill comparison for across the board increases, that would be across the board increases in water usage and. Yes, this is water and sewer combined. Right, and then, uh, but. But you led me to think that the um, all, across the across the board, the just in time, okay. Well, so basically, it's the it's the combination of the smoothed increase for water and the just in time for sewer. Basically, okay. kind of the so it's not all what we believe, okay. you know. It, what we're kind of yes. recommending is the direction, but we're seeking. Uh, okay, so it's your it's not alternative one for both of them. Correct. It, it, again, it comes down to the fact that we have two alternatives here and two alternatives here. So it's kind of alternative, uh, alternative one, alternative two for the for the rate increases, level of rate increases, and then when we look at the rate structure design, it's alternative one for both, kind of adjusting the rate structure for both uh, water and sewer. Are we to questions? Are we at the? We are to questions. Can you, in a nutshell, it for me? Typical 50% of our water customers or of the, the build, about how much is this going to go up per month for well, customers? Well, about water. Well, one, it and depends sewer. which option we choose, but if we do the rate design option, uh, for our customers on three quarter inch meters, yes. which includes most residential, 67% of those customers will see their bill decrease. 60, uh, excuse me, 67% of bills we issue will be less than they currently are. For water. For water. For water. For In both. the first Can year. Do you, you have? Oh, the, the no, bill comparison for both? Yeah. I do not. In huh? Sewer will go up. Sewer will go up, on, yeah, for everybody. For everybody. Yes. They're metered the same way, three-quarter inch. But the, yes, but the, um, I have that slide. But so this is, this is for the typical customer. So the typical thir customer using 3,500 gallons. Now what becomes a little difficult here is when you combine water and sewer, it's actually, it's difficult to actually identify the typical customer because you have two things. You have your average winter consumption that, that kind of, because you don't build water and sewer exactly the same. 
And so what happens is whenever you try to do a bill comparison, you always end up with here's your water consumption compared to your average winter consumption. And they're not the same because what happens is you have somebody who may use 3,500 gallons in the winter, but then in the summer they're using 14,000 gallons, whereas you'll have others who are using 3,500 gallons in the winter and 3,500 gallons in the summer. And so you end up with a huge matrix of impacts and it becomes challenging. So we did do that just for a 3,500 gallon customer using 3,500 average winter consumption. So this is somebody who's only using their, their 3,500 gallons indoors in the, in the uh, winter. And then if this is a summer bill, they're using the same 3,500 gallons come summertime. But they will see a decrease in their bill. For the first um, year. For the first year, and then across the board increases. I think that's a big deal. Because yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yes. absolutely. And, I, and I've tried to make that clear, is, is that the rate design options really only apply to year one, because once we, you know, it's a one-time thing, you know. Well, it's not, because you can look at it again in the future, but what's gonna happen is even if we looked at it next year, chances are it would have only changed minimally no. from year to Last year. Month. You only see large changes, you know, if you look at every three to five years, you only see significant changes that make it worth the effort and expense of a, of a full cost of service study. For the second year, though, tell me what, you know, basically, how much am I going to add to my bill? If I was a typical three-quarter inch meter, 3,500 or less I don't like this bills. per gallons per month. Your water bill is going to go up 8%. Your water portion of your bill is going to go up 8%. Eight percent. Yeah. Sixteen to seventeen. Yeah. I don't think it is. Sewer portion. If we go with the kind of the just in time where we just do the twenty six, it will be zero. So I'm gonna be up there at twelve five. I just want to make sure people understand that. It's right. Eight percent. Eight percent. Do you know what? And I hate comparing, but. I know Norman, and I just think of them because they have such a large university like us. They recently passed a vote for their rates. Do you know what their increase was? I do not off the top of my head, but Norman is such an unusual example because they just passed an increase, but their last increase failed. And my understanding is they asked for less this time than they did last time even. And it's just, they have such an unusual regulatory structure, let's call it, that I'd be careful comparing to them. So they have to be, they have to vote on theirs, correct? They have to vote on their rate increases, correct, which is extremely unusual. Not city council. No, yes, a public, yes, it, a popular vote. It's a popular vote. Um, it goes out to popular vote. And my understanding is, I was reading about this recently, is that their last one failed like three or four years ago. And then they came back this time, and it, 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 I, I think it may have been less than their last one, and so they, they went back and they, they must have had to look at something, obviously, to be able to ask for less money, but it's just, it, it's such a different regulatory structure, and who knows what they're, you know, what they had to do to make, I, I'm not familiar enough to, to know what made that work, but, you know, it seems like, well, they're the other big college town in the state of Oklahoma, so I, I can understand why they'd be a natural comparison, but it's just, they have such an unusual regulatory structure, I, I'd be a little careful uh, using them as a comparison. Did you have another one? Go ahead. I was just going to ask, just to make sure, the reason we're doing this started with the Water 2040 plan. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, this seems to be really heavily, the d discussion has been about from the perspective of the 3,500 gallon user 12 months out of the year. Right. I'm thinking about the public schools, our Votex, our large customers. Is, could you get me some examples or comparisons for what the impact? I can't get a sense for what the what it's going to look like for a for a large customer user. Well, in what you I, have, I don't want businesses going out of well, business because and, of their water bill. And, and nobody does. And, and so you know, like I said, we we basically once we established, you know, looking at the tiers for the three quarter inch meter, basically we. We set the, the tiers for those larger meters based on getting a similar amount of usage in each tier. So that I'm, I mean, I'm just I'm not asking you to explain it tonight. I'm just I'd like to see some we, comparisons so we know what the impact is on the public schools, various public schools, not the one. There's several schools, and what what this is going to do to them. Right. Um, and I think it, and the largest it should also be noted industrial it, commercial customers. Our largest industrial customers actually are, are handled differently. Our largest industrial customers, and there's only six of them, 
have an industrial rate, which actually they, they would not go to the tiered rate. They would, they would have a, a uniform rate that's, that's an average rate. Good. So, so they would not see that. For instance, national. Well, there just wasn't anything in here that would tell us what we were doing. So no, can you just send I, that to me, Dan, later? Or all of us. I think we would all benefit. Yeah. Who's our largest consumer of water? National standard, I believe. Well, the commercial customers and the industrial customers are—they're on a different rate schedule, and we we'll propose. Yeah. Are com commercial customers on the same as residential? They would be on tier. They would be the same as this. Right. Yeah. It's just they larger meters have a higher tier levels to represent. Right. right. Some of them with three or four inch meters. I mean, those are the big customers. I think, Tom, if oh, I'm absolutely. Not mistaken, the first tier is it's set at about seventy percent. Correct. So. 70% of our users are at the first tier or 70% of consumption. Yeah, 70% of the consumption is occurring in that first tier. So there is some. Uh, so if you're, yeah. That makes no sense. Uh, there's some commercial that's in the three quarter meter. There is, absolutely. There little yeah. little shops. Yeah, shops with only shops. a bathroom, absolutely. It's, be a three -quarter it's speed. just the large consumers of water. Right. I'd like to see that, too. But being in the first tier, they would they would share the same benefit as our residential in the first tier. Correct. In that they would see stability for a year and then right. start experiencing 8% after that. The only, th the only thing to remember, though, is that their base charges from 1 to 4 yes. inches will be going up a bit. So it, it's a slightly different impact, but they, they would. We can put some of that together. One example that we had a conversation today with uh, with a two inch uh, user, and so then there they would stay in tier one uh, up to uh, seventy thousand. So whereas a three quarter inch would stay in tier one up to four thousand. So there it's there those tiers are moving based on the size of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the of that so that's why when we went in and we we tried to make this uniform once we got to the where we thought that this appropriate number was um then we tried to make that th this tier uniform all the way down and, and the same uh the same here so that we're treating all of yeah. the various customers in the different meter sizes equitably But the rate for tier one is the same yes. rate per thousand gallons. Right. Regardless of meter size. That's correct. It's just if you have a two inch meter, you can you can use up to seventy thousand gallons and pay the tier one rate. If you have a three quarter inch meter, you can only use up to four thousand gallons at the tier one rate. In the, in the tier one rate under this proposal six dollars and thirty one cents yes sir so if I've got a two inch meter I'll have a base charge of and I don't know where the slide is by the way how many people have how many two inch meters we have out there bill ballpark me I'll tell you exactly just a minute. 20 or 30. 360. there you go more than I thought okay 361 in the in the city municipal city. okay so two inch meter in each the, month i'm paying 38 dollars 93 cents for my base charge so each month i got 38.93 yes sir then i can use up to 70,000 gallons of water and i'll be paying six dollars and 31 cents per thousand gallons of water up to 70,000 yes and if I, I go over 70,000 that bumps me to tier two so for gallons 70,001 right. through 70,100 because we made 100. 100 increments uh, to whatever the net the end of that tier I'll be paying and inc the incremental increase $8. of eight dollars and twenty cents correct for each thousand gallons correct. even though that block is very high okay all right just want to make sure that the, the right. rate per thousand gallons of water is the same yes regardless of the meter size so yes and so i i would just i i could do the math real quick but i'm, I'm willing to, to venture that if you're if you're staying with that well if you're staying within that tier one no matter what um what size meter you have 
this coming out of the chute, it's going to be less than what you're paying today. Well, yeah, maybe not, just because the meter charge is going up. So 3893 is going up from 2823. So they're actually seeing a ten dollar increase. A ten dollar increase. In so their base charge. Okay. Yeah. So, so here's. Um, it, would, it would take. Uh, yeah. So it, it would probably be slightly more. So uh, less than three percent. <clears throat> For a large residential customer, would it make sense for them to replace their three-quarter inch line with a one-inch line? There is a very significant cost associated with installing a meter that, that would discourage them from doing that. That's a well, and cost. not only that, they would, they would in order to, uh, it's just not a matter of the meter, it's the pipe that goes well, from sure. the street um, or wherever the water line is right. to the meter. That, that's, right. that's probably more important than but that's the meter a one -time size cost, itself. Right? And that's uh, well, that's that's something, something worth crunching the numbers on for yeah, somebody sure if they are if they are a heavy residential user I or a heavy residential yeah. commercial. If the, they've got the option to crunch those numbers, if you're like in my house, the water the water main is on the same side of the street uh, as it goes through my yard basically. Me too. And so it would be not very expensive to to do that. Um, but if it's across the street, then it's oh, going to be a pretty be, significant yeah, yeah. cost. I'd be digging a new line. <laughs> I tell you what, we, we, we can tweak the numbers and play with tier rates and all that for forever. I think the question from the trustees tonight really needs to be, do we like this general rate structure, meaning the tiered blocks that comprise about 70% of the consumption is in tier one and then an increment going up we kind of need to give some direction we even like that structure not I'm not asking for anyone to say I like the exact thing you proposed right. and I think that maybe the first question is maybe to take a step back is just in time versus smooth okay that's fair that, that was that was the you know the um, I want to flip back to that the just for in water time or smooth. For sewer and so, for water Water. I mean, on the water side, I think this is this is a better. Well, this this is the this is the just in time versus smooth, and the direction that I gave um, Raf Tellus was to focus on the smooth for 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 water. Quite simply, because if you look at the bottom line, that's in the best interest of the customer. Yeah, sure, easy. It was an, it, to me, it was a no brainer. Um, to, to say, let's focus on this. But when we, it was presented last time, we had, we were presenting the two scenarios. So I said, let's, let's focus on the smooth. And so if there's... Mr. Blankenship, real fast, you said that's in the best interest of the customers. Can you explain to me how scenario one of no rate increase is not in the best interest of the customers? Uh, because that, uh, what that does is if we do no rate increase, then we're not meeting the revenue requirements of our system. The revenue requirements of our system have multiple components. It includes the operation and maintenance costs, the existing debt that we have incurred or repayment of that existing debt, the proposed debt, um, and that immediate proposed debt is water 2040, of which is about $80 million. Uh, and then it also includes the depreciation. Uh, and what we have proposed in the, um, uh, in the revenue requirements is that we just simply fund depreciation of the system. So if the system is depreciating $5 million a year or $8 million a year, uh, whatever it is, that's what we're proposing to fund. So we don't go deeper in the hole so our system is not depreciating faster than we're repairing it. Uh, and then the last component is the transfer um, to the general fund. And so if we, do, if we don't do any increases, we will not be meeting the revenue requirements of the system, and the system will continue to deteriorate at a faster rate than we're able to um, maintain it. Can we make the necessary repairs and improvements to the system that we know we need to make right now or will we be able to make the improvements to the system that are foreseeable over the next five years without a rate increase? No, we won't even come close. Even with a rate increase, we're still, we, we're, I don't know, how do I, I guess, put this? We are trying to over the, for many years, our rates were very low. Flat. And, and, um, and so, 
really what we're faced with is a situation now where the, um, the, the, the um, depreciation or the system has been in many cases almost completely consumed. And if you would have taken, if someone, if they would have taken this approach in the past, then the, those who were using the system uh, would have paid the exact amount that they essentially consumed of the system. But that didn't necessarily occur, and so now we're at a point where we now have to, we're, we're behind or we need to catch up. Okay. Sorry, yes. I, um, when I became a counselor a, a couple of years ago, I think, I signed up for an email alert every time there was a, a water break in the city and I thought I just wanted to see what that was like so I, I want you to tell me or someone to tell me I get 10 of those a day probably I, I may be exaggerating I don't think I am I, I get them every day water main break leak water main break fix water main it goes on and on are you talk? Is this what you're talking about? The, when I get those emails. Yes, the op. Actually, that's just the component. The operation and maintenance. That's where we're funding the repair of those breaks. And what we really um, are then ultimately need to do is to fund that in capital by replacement of of those mains. And that's where we, you know, that's the most. If, over time, that's the most cost-effective approach. Is if we have multiple breaks in a line is to go in and completely replace that line. We just have a tremendous, we have a mountain in front of us. We have a mountain. And we can only get there one step at, to the top of that mountain one step at a time. And we're not going to see, you know, I, I would love to say that we would see significant change and significant improvement over the next five years. But I, I, I can't tell you that. It's going to take, it took us many, many years to get to where we are now. It's going to take us many, many, many years uh, to, to get to a point where maybe we, the funding of depreciation is all we need um, to, to maintain the system you know, in a, in a uh, high quality or in a you know, good manner. The, the issue is, is that we're not, it isn't that we're not unable to deliver you know the water it's it's a reliable system and the water quality meets uh, the water quality standards but if we continue to not fund at least depreciation then we will um, continue to work backwards and at some point in time in the future I don't know when you know it, it'll catch up with us and then we will be in a in a situation where we're forced to make improvements and that's always going to be a more costly approach. Mr. Blankenship, yes. tell me if this takes us down a rabbit trail that is useless. When we were talking earlier, we asked, you know, well, what do these cities do that haven't, don't have rate increases? You said, well, they're eventually going to do a bond issue. Yeah, I think, it, you know, I've, I talked to, uh, I talked to um, water managers um, throughout the state and um, they all, I think, have systems that are in similar condition. So to tell ours. me the tell me the positive and the negative of of just leaving rates the way they are and doing a bond issue. Uh, well, with a bond issue, you have to repay. Well, that depends. If you do a general obligation bond, then it's paid for by property tax. If you do a revenue bond through the utility authority, that's paid for by the actual rate. So you got, anytime you do a bond issue, you're going into debt, you're taking out a loan. And so uh, you have to repay that. If you, wanted, if you wanted to try and repay it with property tax, that has to go to a vote of the people. Uh, on a revenue bond, it, it does not, but in order to be able to issue uh, revenue bonds at a favorable rate, we need to be in a good financially strong position. So and you'd have to raise the rates anyway. Absolutely. To yeah. unless, and like I said, unless you, unless the community said, "Hey, this is, we're we're willing to add this to our our tax bur our property tax our our um, property tax burden," um, then the only other alternative then would be to raise rates in order to retire that debt. 
I have a question, but I don't know if I want to ask it. So if you guys don't want this question asked, just tell me to take it back. <laughs> on the, what? What? <laughs> on the last, I, I agree with everything you've said as far as what we're paying for. The only thing I'd like to have a little look at or some discussion on is the amount we transfer from the SUA to the general fund. Very I, valid point. I, I think that, and I know from past discussions of budget last year, when I was first new and probably half it flew over my head though, I remember a lot of talk of us wanting to see somewhat of a decrease in it. It, it kind of, I think the only uneasy part of all of this is the fact that with the increase, we're gonna, it almost, I don't want it to look like we're increasing it just so we can transfer more. I, I think we either need to have some sort of less of a transfer, maybe just a, a percentage point or two of, of not being transferred that could help us here, or just even if we do this increase, that's fine, but still let's, stop some of the transfer over so we can have something let me tell you Is that, that valid point. very valid let me tell you that what we did in our in our uh, um, revenue requirements calculations we used um, what well, we take the transfer to the general f fund and, and that is budgeted and then we allocate that to all of the different utilities electric water wastewater waste management and we allocate that internally based on the revenue that each of those utilities generate obviously electric generates the greatest amount of revenue by far so it has the biggest allocation uh, so the the water allocation this year was is uh, uh, one little over 1.5 million dollars and so throughout this rate design or um, revenue uh, requirements calculation we have held that steady at 1.5 so we've already assumed that it's not going to get any bigger okay um, and and when when I come back or when we come back with a final report and, and a recommendation you're going to see in the in the uh, proposed resolution that we somehow address exactly what you're talking about to ensure that all of this rates or the rate increases are staying um, in the water being applied to the water system perfect you know because I and that's uh, and so we'll have some language to to, uh, to to address that because I believe that that's what the 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 absolute intent is I mean that's that's what we're standing here and and that's what we spent uh, the last few months pouring over all of this information and talking about is how do we meet the revenue requirements for our water system Absolutely. John you asked if as far as the specifics of this proposal the only thing I still think is something we should think about is whether we do really want to lower rates and then raise them back up in the out year that's fair or if we do that we should communicate to the public in a straightforward way that we're reducing your bill temporarily and it's going to increase by you know in, in the out year I just hate to build up a, a I guess I want to take it back to Mr. Blankenship's question the, they've given us three potential and I'm talking water here at first they've given us three proposed scenarios on what to do do nothing if we want to meet the needs, and Mr. Blankenship just very adamantly, I don't think I've ever heard him answer something quite so directly, that if- Quickly. Or quickly. <laughs> and so if we want, if we are gonna have the revenue to meet the needs that are necessary, we've got two options, just in time or smoothed rate increase. The specifics they gave us was smoothed rate increase. Is that what we want them to come back with a final report on? Or do we want them not only not only the smooth but if we decide that the smooth is the way to go um, then we look at uniform rate versus inclining block question two the question two and that's where you get into the uniform rate is easy for everybody to understand um, it's uh, but the inclining block the second one or the uh, alternative rate that's very difficult to understand but when once again when we looked at the rate setting objectives you know, ease of implementation or understanding the rate was down in the in the lower is it was down in the middle. It was down in the middle. I mean, all of them are important, but the ones that were higher obviously were higher for a reason. And, and really, by the inclining block rate, gives you more of a cost of service allocation. It, it's I think, simply stated, if you have a bigger connection to the system, you're going to put a bigger demand 
on that. Well, it's just going right into my pay as you play theory that we've talked about on you our have trash a can trash size can and all that. You pay more type thing. Trustees, I guess here's what it boils down to. Unless I have missed or you guys haven't spoken up, the, what I'm getting is we would like you guys to come back with a final report. We're, obviously, more conversation needs to go on. But for water, the smoothed rate for question one and then question two, the, the tiered approach. I mean, is it, I mean, I guess right now you need to throw out now if you want a final report or them to focus time on either the cross the board or tiered rate. I, f I think I understand the tiered rate tonight for the first time and don't want to just sign off on what's in this document. Oh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not signing off on, I'm, this is I'd philosophy. I'd like to go do some calculations. Uh, exactly. yeah. yeah, this is and philosophy. I mean, it's the, 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 like across the, the board okay. of the tiered rate. I'm not sure this one exactly drills at home. Fair enough. And the, so. the uniform rate is so simple that we can bring it back as an alternative, even in the, in, in the final report. Mm -hmm. it, it's so simple that it's, mm -hmm. it, it's. I'll just you know, throw that column on there on the spreadsheet. So, so it'll, 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 it'll remain as, a, as okay. an alternative. So well. smooth, tiered. We want it. We want some more digging on that. Is that on water sprinkles too? You want to sprinkles? Yeah. And if I hear it's correctly, and sprinkles. <laughs> you want to understand better the impacts to all customers, yes. all customer yes. classifications. Yes. Yes. Is that, uh -huh. yes. yep. Trustee Weaver, is yep. that what I'm hearing? You says you want to understand the impacts not only to these 3,500 um, these are gallon the users. What, yeah. What's what's it look like for? some of the other folks that are going to be on the other end because obviously we're going to it's designed to meet the revenue requirements and if some customers are paying less that means there's others that are paying more yeah. and you need but to they're just that. paying less that. for one year i just right. that is i want to see something different than just paying less for one year i uh well they'll always pay less every year thereafter proportionately everybody right. they're going to be paying less than tier two and then next year yes you know, but their up. bill's still going up oh, the yeah. bottom right line it'll is go up at eight percent it'll go up at an eight percent increment it's just where you start if you start here and go up at eight percent versus starting a little bit higher and going to, at the end of the day the at the end of the five-year period if we start at a lower base we're going to end at a lower base I would like to see if, uh, if you can, starting out not with a decrease, just let's start with the increase and incrementally make it a little bit smaller. Four. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it, incrementally, under any scenario, you'd want to move towards theoretically eventually getting to the 8% across board increase. The only alternative would be if we kind of just set our ideal rate structure. So. Right now, let's just say we adjust adjust the base charge to zero because that makes an easier comparison. So, so, the, so the one bill will see a no increase in the first year instead of an eight percent increase. Right. The alternative, if we wanted to spread that over five years, would be instead of eight percent increases, they would have about a six percent <coughs> increase each year, and then they would end up at the same point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we can do that. It, it, would you like to see it over five years? Because you can yeah, go in five. the middle. Okay. I'd like to see whatever. Okay. If, five years. And Are we uh, collectively, is that? I would like to see that, that, that. I would certainly like to hear from the other counselors. But philosophy wise, that's all us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. To give them some sort of direction. Philosophy wise, what we're saying we liked is smoothed increase tiered rate and now we can duke it out on those different things but on wastewater wastewater we're basically looking at the just in time versus the smooth and then the second choice is do we add the the um, variable base charge that it would make it similar to the uh, water um, structure the water charge structure comment on that I don't know I think so and I think I like the smooth on that rather than the just in time. Before you, but let's let's look at that real quick yeah. before you. Yeah. Before you. Just in time. Yeah. Is, uh, time lower. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right, right here we have it on the, we've, we pulled it up, uh, Trustee Noble, and in the just in time, we're not getting the no, rate stability. I did stability. not mean that. No, no, no. Did not mean that. Smooth. Okay. But, but at the end of the day, I'm looking at the end, at the end of the five-year period, I think that the just in time is going to be less of an impact on, on the mm -hmm. customer. Now, it's going to, it's going to be a hit um, in, uh, in 16. 16. And, but then after that, it uh, it does it. Then it's then it, you know, it's a pretty big hit from 15 to 16. But then it it's stable, um, and just a slight increase out in 2020. <clears throat> but the cumulative increase um, is 27 percent, as opposed to if we do the smooth, uh, it's it's going to be significantly 50 percent more, or more than that. Yeah. Not exact numbers, but philosophy wise. Scenario two highlighted in green. Right. Is that what we want them to keep working on? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. And I would like the same information on wastewater for our larger okay. users, um, even of those who just use our wastewater portion of the system. Two good point. Because mm -hmm. that's what I should have thought yep. about. What about the is what I'm also hearing is that on the water side, maybe we should start at where we're at today. I, I, I'm kind of getting the feel that that's the consensus of, uh, of the trustees is, you know, let, let's just start at where we're at today. Mm -hmm. Because I, the, I would like the that. slight decrease may it's just be giving, may be just viewed as. It's not buying us very much. It might be buying us heartache. Okay. Yeah. I don't Especially want to do that. with the big hit on the wastewater the second year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Huge. We will, we will uh, in our, uh, when we come back uh, for, for the, the, on the water side, we'll be starting yeah. at, uh, uh, at the, with the, the, the wait, base. Wait, 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 wait. Well, we don't have the, we don't. Time out. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying on it, taking it, it, the proposal they put out that's in here right now, did have a decrease for a lot of people. Now, I mean, true dollars, it wasn't a, a lot. I mean, well, let me phrase that. Depending on the person, it maybe seemed like a lot, but I mean, hard dollars, the 3% decrease in water. Was 70% of the bills. On 70% of the bills. I have no idea and, how much money it is. I, mean, I just meant the individual <clears throat> person. I mean, we're starting 3%, the individual person on their bill. But if we've got the opportunity to meet our goals from a capital standpoint and be able to decrease, even if just one year, I think that's something we really ought to look at. And what you have to recognize I, is that dollar amount. What I can tell you is it's no more than four times 29 cents or $1.16. Right. The largest decrease any bill can that's see. That's 4,000 gallons. Right. That's good. Yeah. It's $1.16. It's not a huge decrease. But I think uh, Vice Mayor Weaver brings up a good point. Is, is it really worth the heartache of the $1.16 or do we just hold it flat? That is certainly an approach we've looked at. In, in, we discussed that. That's been discussed in the past two weeks, and it's been discussed among us and staff. And ultimately, we wanted to bring you. We were trying to narrow things down for your consideration, but but we can certainly look at that. And you know, ultimately, we've been talking about this for for a couple months now. We we're just we need to narrow it down. I mean, we can talk about this as long as you'd like, but at some point, we're going to ask for more, more money if you guys want to keep talking about this. So, um, I think no, there's a. Well, if I, I think I would, there was a question asked earlier, and, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth because I know it's a little difficult, but when you look at the combined bill, depending on the sewer rate option, but if you took the, uh, the just-in-time and you also modified it down for the rate structure, the 3,500-gallon category, the bill would go up $2.44. If your yeah. water that you presented has a dollar sixteen decrease, you still got a net increase on your total ut mm -hmm. water utilities bill of a dollar and something. Yes. So I don't. 
even though the water was going down a few cents, I don't think you would feel your bill went down. On the sewer side, there's no decrease under any scenario. Basically. No, it's an increase. It's only a, it's only a lower increase. For yeah. some and the increase is probably more typically than the, than the savings or the decrease on the water. So you have a net increase in your water utilities bill. Uh, even though the decrease was in well, water. If, if our bill really had it segregated <clears throat> out like that, then I hear what you're saying. <laughs> but our bill has got it all jumbled right well, there. I know, yeah. So no right. one's doing the time to pull right. out water and sewer and comparing just those That's what two. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, however, so. did I understand it? It's all we, broken. Oh, it's separated, yeah. but no one's going here. Let me do the math of take water and add with just the sewer to come up with their water impact that right. month. That's always a challenge we have is that people always refer to it. And I don't know here in Stillwater what, they, what, what the kind of the vernacular is for your bill. All the utilities, they always call it the water bill. Yep. Even, if, even if we're only right. talking about sewer rates, it's like the water bill. Yeah. Here, of course, you've got trash, you've got storm water, you drainage, <laughs> and you have electric all in the same You used to have internet, so. too. Is there internet on the bill? No, there used to be. Sorry, <laughs> I had to perform my time. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a lot of groans back there. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard some cities are considering getting back into their business, and I'm like, why would they do that? Did I understand you say, though, that if we did not have a decrease in the first year of the 3%, that the, it would make the average increase over the next four years be about 6%? That would be... That was to uh, yes. Trustee Noble's option, which is she would have ra she'd rather kind of phase in that benefit. And so what that would mean is basically we would get to the ultimate rate design over a five-year period. And there would be a more gradual change to the rate design if that were adopted instead mm -hmm. of just doing it all in one year and then doing it across the board. That's certainly, we can do that. It's relatively straightforward, but it, it, it's an option. I mean. Ultimately, like I said, we, we need to start narrowing down options to mm -hmm. some extent. But we, so we just need a little more direction. Um, we can come back and go with just as many options. But at some point, you know, we were asked to do certain things. And, and so we're just trying to get to, to, to the finish line and make recommendations to you. I just don't think any of us likes to increase a bill at all, just not a utility. but. I just wanted to see it uh, not go down and then up for four more years. I would rather just straightforward, let's deal with it now. Um, and, and that's why across the board is, it, is an approach we can take, isn't it? Sure is. That's very tempting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could also do, we could do it across the board and only adjust the base charges and, then, and that would have less of a, less dramatic impacts, but still Address cost of service a little bit. Um, I mean, there's 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 many there's a variety of alternatives with all the information we've given you tonight. But um, ultimately, okay. I I I think where we need to go now is we've kind of given you a general theory, and if the trustees have any other specific items they want to see, or tweaks, or you know what is a what is the, if a tier is at five thousand as opposed to fourth? You know those kind of questions. You need to get those to Mr. Blankenship by. Depends on how quickly you want to move forward. Um, so uh, we were hoping to I think um, be able to come back uh, in about a month with the report and, and some recommendations. Um, so uh, if you want to see some different scenarios, certainly if you could share that with me sometime this week, uh, that would uh, be most helpful. But um, I think... Uh, I have one more question. Okay. I'm so sorry. No problem. I think this one's an important one. Right now, how much do we generate, generate in revenue? We are, uh, we have, uh, I believe... With our current rate structure. In our, in our current rate structure, our total projected uh, revenues is, I believe, $14 million and so for, water. for water. For water. Okay, and with the projected, it, if we adopted this, how much revenue would we generate? 
uh, it would ultimately at year 2020 uh, uh, approximately 21 million um, in water it would start out at uh, um, we, we would actually be we would be uh, under what our our net revenue or our revenue our revenue our requirements are for 16 but because we're that's because we're taking the smooth approach um, and uh, so we would go from uh, 13 million in um, well if we, we need to include the uh, the uh, transfer to the general fund so we'd be about 14 million five hundred thousand uh, in 2016 and then with the transfer uh, in 2020 we'd be about 22 million four hundred thousand and the transfer is how much 1.5 million and it doesn't go up it stays flat and it stays flat All right and we start meeting our depreciation obligation correct 2016 that's we we actually because we're taking a smooth approach um, our uh, well our, our revenue requirements uh, will be uh, slightly more than what we will actually um, recover in rates in 2016 but uh, we we reverse that trend in by 2017 thank you You're welcome All right, so this week, do your best to get scenarios, tweaks, questions. Other ways you want to see this chopped up and diced up. And we will, and we will look at the impacts to all the customers. Like I said, we've, we've focused on the three-quarter inch, but we'll take a look at the across the board and, and try to get you some, a better feel for what the alternatives do to the other customers and obviously get get them the information as soon as you can but obviously we'll have to react once they get those specific right. things answered back to us so okay thank you any other questions or comments okay if not that's everything on the SUA agenda is there a motion to adjourn SUA motion to adjourn second motion and second to adjourn SUA as approved five to zero, SUA is adjourned. I'm gonna call to order the city council meeting for special meeting for September 9th, 2015. Uh, Mr. Dorman. Uh, two requests for executive session tonight, sir. Request executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307B1 for the purpose of confidential communication regarding the employment, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, or resignation of city manager Dan Galloway, city attorney John Dorman. Gotcha, and the agenda does say February 9th, 2015, not September. That was me. <laughs> Good job. So. Okay. okay. I didn't even hear that. Six months from now, I won't be sitting here. So. <laughs> anyway, okay, we got two requests for executive session, and uh, before we vote on that, I do notice down at the bottom of the agenda that no action will be taken on these items. So, is there a motion to move into executive session? So move. Second. Motion and a second to move to executive session. Oh. Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Uh, Gina. That is approved five to zero. Um, we'll yell here in a minute. 